Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo group. A while ago someone left a comment on one of my previous videos asking me if I could um, copy this blue grid pa pattern on this particular video which was by a gentleman who I'm not going to insult by trying to pronounce his name. Um, the only trouble with this video, apart from it being in Photoshop, is that it goes at a million miles an hour. It's almost impossible to follow. Um, even when you slow it down um, you know, by the settings, it's still too fast. On top of that, it's the Russian version of Photoshop, I believe. So even trying to guess what the menus are is difficult. But luckily, I was able to work out uh, to how to do this blue 1980s type grid. Um, so that was not a problem. But you know, it's rather it's quite easy to do actually. But the the rest of it, I, I really couldn't follow. Not at the speed that this video goes at. And as you can see, like it had like 65 likes and 70 dislikes. So you know, not a lot of people, you know, really like this one because of the speed. So I thought, what I need is, if I'm going to add a bit of text, I need something to go in there. So I thought I'd look at this video here, which is this one, which is by Spoon Graphics, and is really, really good, well worth a watch. And as you can see, it's got 8,000 likes and only 156 dislikes. So, in my opinion, this is a good one to try and adapt. Um, I've not followed absolutely everything in this video. So, if you want to sort of pick up some of the extras, like there's some extra sort of um, shading around the edges of these letters to give it that more chrome feel. Um, I've not adapted that part of it. So, if you want to sort of take this a bit further, I'd suggest you look at this and get your ideas from that. I will add links to both of these videos in the description to my video. And this was the end result that I ended up with. So this is what I'm going to try and recreate now. Now there are a lot of steps and a lot of colours and um, so it may be a bit stop and start in because I have to keep looking at my notes or what I'm hoping to do is um, this is a list of the colors that I'm going to use in this and I may copy and paste these over or just l use this as a memory guide so let us get started so the first thing I need to do is open a new document now I'm going to make this fairly big, you can make it whichever size you want, but I'm going to start with 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters, and a DPI of 300, although I'm sure you could probably do this in a lot less DPI, but I'm going to stick with 300. And once you have your new document, just add a pixel layer, by clicking on this icon down here. Come into the flood fill tool, selecting black as your foreground colour, and just filling that with colour. So next we want text. So I'm going to come to the artistic text tool, and I'm going to set the fill colour, which is this black box next to the word fill up here, and I'm going to set this to white, which is basically 2555 across the board. Or if you're going with the hex sliders, it's FFFFFF. And now I need a font. Now, going back to this video here, he's, he did a sort of a snazzy font here and a more squared blocky font for the one underneath 
Now I don't have these two fonts myself so I'm going to use ones that I do have that are as similar as I can get. Um, whether these are Affinity Photo fonts or whether they are Windows fonts um, I'm not 100% certain but the first one I'm going to use is called Young Sook BTN and then I'm just going to click and drag out the first word and then just type in like that and then I'll just resize this slightly do and then just for now I'm just going to center it then I'm going to select the other font that I'm going to use which is Bolts FM SF and I'm just going to put it down here and put in 80s magic and I'll just slightly alter the size of this and then center this one right in fact what I might do I'll come to the move tool and I'll just move this up a bit actually about there I can always recenter that right so highlighting this other text up here now I'm not going to alter this text because it works best like in a straight line but this text I mean I know it's not necessarily in a straight line because it's sort of all up and down I am going to alter it slightly a little bit more now when you hold the cursor over one of these nodes it will be a two-ended arrow saying giving you the direction that you can move it be it horizontally if you hold it there or vertically if you hold it over these top and bottom nodes but if you hold the cursor just outside of these nodes the arrows will turn to two little arrows one pointing up one pointing down and if you click and move here you can slant one end up or down so I'll do the same on this side I'll drag this one down and if you do it just above the middle node the little arrows will change to left and right and then you can slant it to the left or to the right so I'm going to slant mine slightly to the right and then with the move tool in the center I can reposition this so it looks a bit better hopefully it's come off that tool second so I like the way that looking that looks so now moving on to the next step right so I'm now going to click and highlight the layer where I have the main block text and I'm going to come up to the move tool and from the move tool you have this button up here that says convert to curves so I'm going to click on that and what that will do is we'll change that from a layer into a group where you have all the letters individually on their own layers now I'm just going to rename this one outline you don't have to do that but it does make it slightly easier to remember which one's doing what because I'm, what I'm going to do now I'm going to right click this group and duplicate it and then I'm going to rename this one center so that way I can remember which one is doing which so 
I'm going to click and highlight on the outline group and again I'm still on the move tool and up here I've got next to the fill color you've got the stroke color at the moment it is blank so I'm going to click on that to give me the color options and then I'm just going to pick any color it doesn't really matter at this moment because this will we will lose this later on but you do need a color that will stand out on that black background and then I'm going to click on this line here where it's got 0 0.2 and I'm going to alter the width of this up to about six points and then hopefully you can see the color in fact I might go a little bit more with this one I'll go with 10 points I think before I made the word 80s magic a little bit bigger so it stood out better but I'm going to leave it on 11.4 because this is going to be you won't see the white on the inside of this later on all you'll see is the outline which is what we need so you can make it whichever size that you feel you need so moving on right next you need to click and highlight on the center group and then click on the layer effects button which is just this FX down here and it will open up the layer effects panel let me just put this out there and the first one we're going to use is the gradient overlay so I'm going to put a tick into that and then click on the word gradient overlay to give the options that we want now currently it is set on black to white and at zero degree angle means it just goes from black to white going from left to right um, this is the default I believe and so this is what everybody will get so if you click in this color gradient area it will open up the options for that area and you have the two nodes one at each end one going from black the other one to white now what I want in here is five extra nodes so I'm just going to click insert to get the first one and click insert again and rather than just keep clicking in insert because it will try and squeeze them all in at this end I'm going to click on this node at the end here and then click on insert and add a couple more and then I'll just click on the middle one and insert an extra one there so I now have my seven nodes so I'm going to click on the first node on the left and if I come up to my color list here uh, the first one I want is D99000 so I'll click on the color here and I have this set up for RGB hex sliders you can select that from this drop down menu and the color that I'm going to select was D99000 and as you can see let's turn that so this sort of orangey yellow now what I will do at this point is I'm going to change this angle from 0 down to 270 so the colors will come down the text from top to bottom now you don't have to stick with the colors I'm picking and you don't have to stick with the amount of colors I'm picking or where, you, where I'm going to put the gradients it's all up to your personal taste I'm just trying to sort of stick sort of as close as I can to the Photoshop tutorial with 
some minor alterations but this is as close as I could get so coming to the next color which if I come to let me just copy that Come into the second node, click on that to make that the color uh, node we are altering. Click on the color and then I will use Control and V to paste in that color. And I'm going to leave the position on 25%. next color is going to be black so that's zero 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 so on the third node I'll just make this make that black and the position I'm going to make at fifty percent And then the next one is 7F158F. Let me just copy that. And the fourth one. And the position I'm going to make this one is 57 percent so that is you know, quite close to the black line and the next one is oh it's the same color the next one sorry I forgot that bit so that one should still be in memory so I'll click on that one and then just control and V to paste that in and this one is going to be set at 72% and I seem to have lost a node somehow I should have five in there between those two and I've only got four um, don't know quite how that happened. Um, let me just carry on. I will insert another one again here. And the color on this one is going to be F D F F 31. And that is going to be at a position of 79%. And then the last node is already on white, so I'm going to leave that like that. Um, something has gone slightly wrong here. In fact, that, you know, because I've got a straight line where the black is and a little bit of grey underneath. But I'm not going to go back and try and find out where I went wrong there it's probably because well, I lost that node along the way but that is okay it will do for this particular project so now we have the gradient overlay sorted out next I'm going to put a tick into inner glow click on the word inner glow to get the options and let me just come back to my color list. The inner glow is 3E4A87. I'll just copy that. So I'll click on this color box here and then Control and V to paste that in. This gives you this sort of dark blue color. And I'm going to change the blend mode to normal 
and then I'm going to push the radius up to quite high, quite about 60, you know, 60, which will give us a like dark blue inner line here. But I am just going to drop the opacity down so it's not so dark and visible. I'm going to go to about 80%. There we go. Right, next one we're going to do is put a tick into outline. Click on the word outline to get the options. And I'm going to change the color here to white, which is FFFF. I'm going to change the alignment and I'm currently set on outside to inside. And then I'm going to push this up to about six or so pixels. Um, you know, you, you could make it as bold as you want, but anywhere between six and ten works. In fact, I'll leave that on 10.5 this time, make it stand out a little bit more. So, the next one we want is Outer Glow. So, I'm going to put a tick into Outer Glow. Click on the word for Outer Glow to highlight and bring up the options. And the color is going to be 1, 2, 2. zero eight a which is a dark blue and the intensity I'm going to push up to 100 and the radius is going to go quite high again up to about 80 pixels and you may not be able to see this but you know I've got a sort of thick blue line going around the outside of all of this text here it's a bit jaggedy I'm not certain if there's a way of getting rid of that but let me just drop that down a bit and maybe make it less jaggedy it's about 63 percent and then I'm just going to drop the opacity of that so it is sort of just a a faint blue glow round the outside. Um, I've dropped that opacity down to 72%. So that is all I need to do to this bit of text at the moment. So I will close the FX button. Right, so now I'm going to click on the outline group. And I'm going to add effects to this, so I'm going to click on the effects button. And again, we are going to add gradient overlay. And then click on the word gradient overlay for the options. Now, as you can see, this has taken away the red outline that I did at the beginning. But I needed that for this to work. And... So if I move this around, hopefully you can see that it is altering the outline area that we made red earlier. So what I'm going to need here is the first color is 3346BC. And as you can see on my little notes here, I need to put it on those 1, 3 and 5. So I'm going to, I need six nodes here, so I'm going to, like before, insert. Six. So click on the first one. And that's the dark blue. The third one. Put in the same 
color and the fifth one and then just come back to the, my little list here and the other color is B7 E3 FE and that's going on nodes 2, 4 and 6 Node number two, and then the last one. No, it's just a case of I'm not necessarily going to give you positions for this, you can just click and alter them so they're all sort of evenly spaced or not not evenly spaced that's totally up to your personal taste so now if you move the um, angle around to wherever you want you hopefully get this sort of what looks like a sort of a metallic sheen around the outside edge. But I'm going to leave mine pointing downwards at 270. Now what I am going to do now is come to the outline option and click on the word outline and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of bring back that red colour that I had earlier, which is I'm going to use AE0026. And then I'm just going to raise the radius until it starts to show. So I've got a slightly pink outline, but it's not coming too far to encroach on the blue outline that I had previously. So this is on about 15, almost 16 pixels. So now I can close this down. And I am just going to go and save my progress and I would advise you to do the same. So I'll just quickly go and save that. I'll be back in a sec. Right. I'm now going to make alterations to this other bit of text, Affinity Photo, up here. So I'm gonna click and highlight on that layer. And I'm going to add um, effects to that. So I'm gonna to come to the FX button. Now in my early um, attempts at this I followed the video that I mentioned earlier by Spoon Graphics and I used a gradient overlay but when I decided to slant the text that didn't work so well because it it wanted to continue slanting uh, putting the gradient and the gradient didn't work as effectively once I slanted the text so I'm going to use color overlay instead and the color I'm going to pick is a pink color you can use whichever color you want but it is FF00FC and then I'm going to click on bevel emboss and then click on the word to get the options and I'm going to make the type currently set on pillow I'm going to set it to inner and I'm going to move the radius up to about 35 pixels 36.3 is close enough and 
I'm gonna put smooth on about ten pixels. Now I'm now going to change the colour of the highlights and the shadows. So I will click on the highlights first and change the colour and the colour I'm going to select is FFE1FB which is not that far off of being white but it's just slightly different and I'm going to increase the opacity of that up to a hundred percent and then the shadows color I'm going to change that to F four zero nine A F which is a, a pink colour and I'm gonna leave that on seventy five percent that gives you a sort of accentuated white edges around the text and then I'm going to add an inner glow and have it set on edge I'm going to leave the color on white and I'm going to increase the radius up to about 20 pixels and I'm going to change the blend mode to color dodge and I'm going to leave the intensity on 50%. Now I personally couldn't see, couldn't see a major difference to the text with these alter, these last alterations but they were in the original video so I've added them into this and I'm hoping it does something. So I will I can now close that and I will again go off and save my progress always a good idea to save your progress um, wherever you can so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click and highlight on the bottom layer here and I'm going to add a pixel layer and I'm going to come to the paintbrush tool and just double click on this color here and I'm going to pick I'm not going to give you a hex color for this I'm just going to pick a random blue color that will do I'm going to reduce the size of this a bit now you want the hardness set on zero and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click five or six times across this top bit of text here. Um, no, sorry, the bottom bit of text that's pink on the top. I'll raise the size for this. And just so that there's a sort of blue glow behind the bottom bit of text like that. Then change this to a pink colour then reduce the size and click a few times across across there and then I'm going to change that blending mode to screen and then I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 30% maybe 40% just so there's that sort of glow behind the text in the various colors again you can pick whichever colors you want um, it, a lot of it depends on the colors you've used for your text um, right this next step is 
add in a lens flare. Now you can get lens flares um, from the internet and I have in previous videos shown you how to find um, some free ones but this is the one I'm going to use here and I'm just going to right click that copy and come back to this project click on the top layer and then edit and paste so I'm going to come to the move tool going to move it roughly where I want it about there and I'm going to change the blend mode to screen to get rid of the black background and then with the move tool I'm just going to put it where I want it which is about there and then I will right click and duplicate that and then maybe put another one in down there and I'll duplicate that one and move this to let's try there so that is that part of the tutorial finished so what I'm going to do now I have this layer at the top already highlighted but I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click on the layer just above the black background and that will highlight all the ones in between and I will right click on that and group them so now if I move the group all of them will move together um, so now we're going to make the grid so I'm going to hide that group that I've just made and come to the background layer now bizarrely all this what I've done previously with the text you could do in Affinity Designer and most of what we're going to do with the grid you can do in Affinity Designer but the only thing you can't do is the perspective part of it um, you might be able to do that by converting it to curves maybe and altering it that way but that's slightly beyond my capabilities at the moment um, so I'm going to stick to doing this whole project in Affinity Photo so what we're going to need is the pen tool and it does help if you have snapping on and then you have the stroke color which mine is still currently set on this pink but you can change the color to whichever you want and then change the width down to three pixels easier to type that in and if you have your rulers on it does make this slightly easier if you haven't got the rulers you can go to view and then show rulers or control and R and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my first one on the two uh, centimeters I think mine's set on centimeters and I know I'm just going to click once and if I hold down the shift key it will keep this as a straight line and then click on the bottom so we have our first line and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click onto that and I'm going to click on rasterize which will um, make it into a raster layer rather than a vector layer and now this next part is very quite important because you need to be on the move tool um, mainly because we're going to do what I think is called power copying and to do that you have to be on the move tool I believe um, so I'm going to right click on this and duplicate it 
and then I'm going to use the move tool to drag this over to the four point on the rulers above and because the, the snapping is, will help it should have shown up showing you where oh it's on the bottom the red line on the bottom shows you that I've not deviated up and down so now that we have our second one I can just press Control and J and it will power copy in exactly the same steps as the first one so there's no need to keep doing moving individually by hand so the, that last one I just made is the currently selected layer I'm going to come down to the bottom one no, not the black background but the first pixel layer hold down the shift key click on that and it will highlight all of those and I'll right click and group them together so what I'm going to do now is right click on that and duplicate it and then come up to arrange and rotate 90 degrees doesn't really matter whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise and I'll just zoom out slightly so you can see this is now quite big compared to the the other layer below it and then I'm just going to stretch this out and bring this down so we have that I just press control and zero to bring it back up to the full size and once you're happy with your grid you can highlight both those groups and then group those together so they are all one group and then if I come to the perspective tool you can show the grid if you want the grid if you find that helpful but I'm just going to click on the the node here node there and just bring it down roughly and then I'm going to bring back that my text group so I know what it is I'm looking at and I'm going to sort of start from the corner of that bit of text and visually get it straight like that I'll just zoom out slightly so I can see the bottom nodes And just position them where you think they should be. And, you know what works best for your particular bit of text. Right. Yeah, you know, quite happy with that. So I'll just click Apply. I'll press Control and Zero to make that back to the main size. Now what I will do is I will just hide that top group a second again now you may not like this sort of straight edge here so what I can do if I click on the pixel layer for that grid and I add another layer just above it come to the paintbrush tool and I'm going to change the color to black and I've got a hardness set on zero and now I can just paint black on this edge and just sort of gradually fade that into the image now I can bring back the text and how far you want to sort of 
bring this fading in is up to your personal taste. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So this next step, I'm going to right click on the top layer, which I've just highlighted, and I'm going to come to duplicate. And then in a range, I'm going to flip vertically. And then I'm going to use the move tool to drag this down so that those two G's are just touching. And then I'm going to lower the opacity down to about 30% mark to give that sort of reflection and that is the tutorial finished i hope you've learned something from it so thank you for watching and goodbye